I was born in a family where Islam was uh, a beautiful thing and uh, I was taught in a true light of Islam. To me Allah was like my master and uh, I am a subject and I would do things to please Allah all the time and that made me happy and I mean it's hard for a girl of like 12 years of age to fast you know? and I would do that without any complaints and I would be the happiest person doing that so Allah was my focus you know like my master it's, it's a supreme power you know I was told that we don't need any mediators we just have to ask Allah and he listens to us so I had full faith and I was confident that my prayers are heard and there is somebody who's called Allah above and he answers them I couldn't compare any other religion to Islam it was so good to me so I had no way of getting into anything else but I think God has his own plans when I got married my husband was from a Christian background his mom was a Christian and uh, I was very depressed to know that a person who was a Muslim has been converted to Christianity and that was a great burden on my heart that gave me a like a goal that I should do something I should get into this family and bring them back to Islam my mother-in-law she passed away after her death pastor came from where my mother-in-law used to worship and they came to visit us then they were so sweet and then you know I said okay I had questions now I wanted to ask about Bible why it's like this and things like that. I wanted to know their views so they said okay then why don't we start a Bible study so that you can have all your questions and we can answer all your questions so that's fine you know it's fair enough and I thought I was very intelligent you know, because the background I had I thought I'm a very intelligent person and Christians know nothing you know they are confused people I thought but I went and when it went on for a year the Bible study and uh, after that you know after that they said now what do you say Samsa I said oh now before I came to you guys thinking there is some hope you know but after knowing your religion I have no no interest so I said okay we'll be praying for you and that made me more angry than anything else I said why do these guys say that we are praying for you am I such a big sinner that everybody is praying for me so when I, I came back home I complained to my husband and then I said okay I'm not going to go for Bible study but I would like to do a comparative study of Islam and Quran I mean Bible and Quran. So he said, okay, it's okay if you want to do it. So we started doing, sincerely, we would compare the, both the books and start jotting down a few points. Naturally, all good points came from Quran and nothing came out of Bible. But one night, like after 10 days, we were doing it and one night I sat, did the comparative study and I told my husband, I said, uh, there's one good thing that I have found. The Bible talks about love love of God love of God where else we don't find it in Quran of course it directs you towards the love but like it doesn't say directly God is love God is forgiving God is like you know you do anything but in the name of Jesus your sins are forgiven it doesn't say that in, even if you are a good pious Muslim you offer namaz you do everything and you die still you don't have that assurance that you have salvation your sins are forgiven and you are going to heaven there is no such thing promised to a Muslim I said this one good thing is that God is love so I jotted that point down and then that, that night I said you know now I, I always uh, appreciate it when Christians pray you know this prayer spontaneously and we Muslims don't do that we pray in our hearts quietly especially women so I said okay let me pray tonight the way Christians do. So I knelt down. I wanted to do the way they do it. I knelt down and I started praying. And that night, as I was trying to pray, I felt as if there was a lock on my 
mouth and it has been unlocked. And I was re referring to all those Bible verses which I had never thought that I would remember. And like I, the words were flowing from my mouth, you know. Like more than 50, 60 Bible verses I was reciting. I think I knelt down at 9.30 in the night and by the time I finished it was 3 o'clock in the morning. So my, I was not tired, uh, my knees didn't hurt and I, I was like fresh. And that night I said, Jesus, if you are true, reveal yourself to me. Always I said, Allah, if Jesus is true, show it to me. I want from you directly, I don't want to take it from Christians. So that was the night, like, you know, I was not on guard. I, I, God was watching me. He said, it's enough, Samson. You have been trying too hard to protect yourself. Now let go. So I just said, Jesus, you are true. Reveal yourself to me. And the moment I said that, like my tongue was unlocked and I was free in spirit. And when I got up after the prayer, for after so many hours, I got up and I was still fresh and I, I felt a joy in my heart and I, I just wanted to tell the whole world that I'm a Christian and I'm happy and I wanted to call the pastor, I wanted to call the, those missionaries that I've been friendly with and my husband said, you're mad, you're crazy, you, you can't call them at this hour of the night, do it in the morning. Anyway, I, I was happy, you know, the joy was bubbling out, it was oozing out of my system and I got up in the morning, my husband left the house like 5 o'clock in the morning and I was not going to be like, you know, sleep or anything. I went and took the Bible and when I read and read and read and I suddenly felt that the whole room was lit up with a glow, a light that was not a light that we can describe in words and it was amazing. I was like taking a shower bath in that glow and I don't know how long I stayed and to my surprise, my children were very small that time. None of them came near to me. None of them asked for a glass of water. Telephone didn't ring. Not even the postman rang the bell. Not the milkman came to our door. It was like I was totally cut off from the world and I was having a fellowship with my Lord. And uh, that's how I experienced the power of and the love of Jesus Christ. It completely changed my life, like I was a staunch Muslim a day before and next morning I was a strong believer in my Lord. That was an amazing, till today I don't understand, you know, how can the love of God change people overnight? You know, nobody can escape that love, you know, it's so powerful, it's so awesome that you feel drenched in that love. And I saw myself, like when you see a small screen and suddenly you see a huge screen, big screen, I could see myself on a big screen. I said, oh my God, is this me? I thought I'm a good person. I thought I'm a righteous person. Like the Bible says, all your righteousness is like rags before God. And it's so true. I could see that. You know, I could feel that, that I was not good at all. That goodness and this goodness is like pulls apart. I was a Muslim and I understand like we are not supposed to read the gospel because we consider it as blasphemy and uh, we are not supposed to question Quran. Well that's okay. I, I don't want to say anything but one thing I would like to say that with an open mind, with an open heart, just explore the gospel. Because even the Quran says, you know, if you don't understand anything, go to the people of book, go to the people where God's word has been revealed. And Christians are the people of book according to Quran. And if we shut the doors, and if we don't want to do anything, we don't want to I mean, what is holding us from reading, from knowing? If God is so powerful, then what is the fear that stops us from getting into it? Every Muslim should be able to listen 
and to read because if they listen they will be able to understand what is the gospel if you don't want to listen you read so many books you read so many uh, all sorts of literature secular literature i mean what's the problem in listening or reading the gospel if you don't like it it's okay forget about it but you may like something you may i mean you will you it's going to be a life changing experience for them you will not be a loser that's that's what i pray you know that muslim my muslim brothers and sisters i love them you know and they are beautiful people if they could only open the gospel you know they will complete god's vision